What is up, y'all? Kevin Kuhn here from Athlete Factors. This is the Athlete Factors podcast. My guest today is physical therapist Gabriella Greif. Got it right. Yes. <laughs> awesome. How are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? Very good. Thank you. Very so good. let's dive right into it. Tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, personal background, athletic, academic all that stuff. Yeah, so I am Gabrielle Greif. I'm a physical therapist um, here in Dallas. I run my own concierge physical therapy practice, um, treating all orthopedic conditions with uh, interest, special interest in runners and your fitness athletes. Um, and right now I'm going into people's homes. I'm all concierge based. So come into your home, bring everything um, from a table to some equipment, some weights, um, and get you back where you want to be in terms of just physical fitness, sports, or just daily activities. Um, so that's what I'm doing right now. I originally went to school, I'm from Dallas, went to school in Boston, Massachusetts at Northeastern University. So if you're a Mavericks fan, JJ Barea, his alma mater. Mm. <laughs> <Fine>. <laughs> You went to school there. You went to school there, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I went to undergrad and graduate school there. Nice. Um, after school, I stayed up there for about four years working in just your general outpatient orthopedic clinic. Um, and then had recently just left that job and moved back to Dallas. So I'm super happy to be here now, back with my family and just back in my hometown, which is really fun. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then just a little athletic background since we're talking about athletes here a little bit anyway. Mm -hmm. um, definitely never been an awesome athlete, but have always participated in sports. So growing up, um, basketball was kind of my main sport with a little sprinkle of running mixed in. So in middle school, high school, I ran cross country track, played basketball. Um, as I moved into college, I was on the club running team. So that covered cross country and track. Um, and now in terms of running, well, unfortunately not in the last year, but I've done a lot of racing, everything from one mile races, 5Ks, 10Ks, um, and then I've done a ton of half marathons, um, which is kind of my favorite distance. Have yet to branch out on a marathon. Um, unfortunately, just due to injury, every time I sign up, I get injured and I don't make it back in time. Maybe that's a sign that you should do them. <laughs> Some people would say that. I personally, I'm opposed to marathons. Yeah, have you ever been a marathon? <laughs> no. <laughs> I, I, it's fine for other people. I have no interest in doing it. I, yeah, being in far. Boston though, the last yeah, few years, yeah. like they just throw the Boston Marathon in your it's face. So. Kind of a big deal. It is a huge deal. So one day we'll see. Don't know when that day will be. Yeah, I. uh I promised myself if I ever do a marathon, it will be at the end of an Ironman. Like I, that's a good goal. I'd rather just full you know what? Ironman. Oh yeah, it's yeah. Be a full if Ironman. I'm, if I'm gonna run a marathon, I might as well you know like swim really far, you know, bike really really far, and then at run that point, pretty far too. At, yeah, at that point, now I can run a marathon. Sounds very respectable. <laughs> I don't plan on doing an Ironman either. So. <laughs> but, you know, plans change. We'll see. Who knows? Yeah, definitely. So, you're from Dallas, moved away, moved back, started a brand new business all during a pandemic. Yeah. The business part, anyway. Starting the business. So, how uh, how's that been? It has been very interesting to say the least. Um, starting my own business was something I've had on my mind for about two years now, mm -hmm. um, but I've never made the jump to do it. And the pandemic almost just forced me into that position. So it's kind of been a blessing in disguise, mm -hmm. um, truthfully. So um, I unfortunately have left my job, my outpatient job at the, end, at the beginning of the pandemic, mm -hmm. just coincidentally, bad timing. Yeah. Um, had even had jobs searched and hopped around, even worked in a COVID unit for some time at the peak of the pandemic mm -hmm. or the initial peak, I guess we're peaking again. Um, <laughs> <Round> two. 
Exactly. Yes. And then we're in and out of nursing homes and places I just didn't really find to be enjoyable. Yeah. Um, so just being forced into this position has been just a lot of learning mm -hmm. in between. Um, it's been nice to just have support of my family here, um, mm -hmm. which is something not everybody has. So um, it's been interesting and a slow process, but something I'm really grateful to be doing. So yeah, that's one of those things starting a, a new business um, in an area where at like at least this is where you're from. Yeah. Like you you kind of have connections. You've got a community, um, and even during a pandemic, like the the need is still there. Yeah. So it's one of those things. A lot of people, I'm sure, would be like, nah, "I'll wait it out and then start something new." But like, yeah. Some people are doing really really well right now, and other people are just kind of you know, riding that unemployment wave and who's yeah. to say uh, <laughs> what's better, but yeah, exactly. You know, it's one of those things. So, yeah. Yeah. So <sighs> virtual personal training is very, very much in vogue right now. Mm -hmm. um, like sales of Peloton and uh, like my girlfriend just bought a treadmill. It, comes with its own screen and, and she's got a year's worth of virtual training through her treadmill and like yeah. all this stuff is on the rise. So how how is either concierge personal, uh, sorry, not personal training, concierge physical therapy or like virtual physical therapy? How does that differ from the traditional physical therapy model? Yeah. So, um, virtual th physical therapy, um, I do on a case by case basis. So I don't do it that often just because I don't really prefer it. It's obviously something new in physical therapy and it's something we've all had to adapt to very quickly. Mm -hmm. Um, and there's just been a huge learning curve, so it's not perfect. Probably won't be perfect for a while, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, so for me personally, I like to at least do an initial session and physically get my hands on someone mm -hmm. um, after I'm fully sanitized, wear gloves, whatever is needed, sure. um, and just dig in deep to what their impairments are, what their issues are, mm -hmm. um, and then I can move into virtual sessions for me if that's what's needed um, or if it's just a location issue, mm -hmm. COVID concern, whatever it is at that time. Um, and. Just for me personally, I'm more of a manual based therapist. So mm -hmm. I do pretty much majority of my treatment is hands on treatment followed by some exercises at the end. So mm -hmm. um, that's been the biggest struggle for me is there's obviously no hands on involvement when you're doing virtual. Right. So it's really how to sharpen my own skills in having patients almost do a self assessment of themselves yeah. mm -hmm. or at least like creating or giving them the right cueing to be able to do it so I can see what I need. Yeah. Um, and then instructing them through exercise with even through exercise, like I'm always putting my hands on people to cue them. Mm -hmm. Um, and now that's gone. So, um, it's, <laughs> it's been it challenging. It's a little more difficult, doesn't it? Yeah. And yeah. it's kind of surprising. A lot of people are not very well aware of their bodies. So, yeah. um, in terms of exercises, knowing what muscles to fire, mm -hmm. I'm educated, you're educated in that, but these patients aren't. So. Um, making sure they're doing exercises correctly has just been a challenge and I know I usually see patients for an hour but when I do it virtually it usually drops to about 30 minutes mm -hmm. just because there's not as much time you don't need as much time <laughs> to instruct them through the exercises you need to do so right. some people it's been successful in um, some people we tried one or two and we're like hey I don't think this is gonna work we ought to do this in person yep. um, so it's kind of been up and down in that sense yeah yeah, no, I, it, my experience has been relatively similar. Like there's some people who are like, Hey, I, I need help. I've got a race coming up and this hurts. What do I do? And I'm like, well, I'm open for business. And they're like, I don't, I don't want to leave my house. I don't want to, it's, it's not personal. I just don't want to come to the office. I don't mind if you come here, we can work out in my backyard. And I'm like, okay, we, we can do that. Or they're like, 
Let's do that a couple times and then we'll just transition to like FaceTime or Skype yeah. or Zoom. And it's like, okay, well, initially I had to go that route. Like when Dallas and Richardson shut everything down and yeah. I had to, you know, sink or swim. So yeah. I was doing everything via my phone on, yeah. on this tripod right here. Yeah, it comes <laughs> to such great use. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and I think that's been just a challenge for everybody because yeah. there's no other options. You had to make it work. For sure. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about injury prevention for runners. So before we jump into like I had an injury, let's go to how do we prevent an injury? And since you you work specifically with runners that's kind of your niche yep um i also work with runners so i guess we're competitors now <laughs> and competitors <laughs> but allies at the same okay. time i like that I yeah like we work that. together yeah that's that's good so tell us a little bit about um what are the what are the key things for endurance athletes or runners specifically to keep in mind when it comes to injury prevention like what should they be focusing on um and what do you consider like the pillars or the keys to preventing injury in a yeah. sport where contact is probably like contact with other athletes probably isn't going to happen to cause injury it's going to be overuse mm -hmm. or improper mechanics or too much volume or yeah. something along those lines yeah definitely um so with runners or your endurance athletes you're looking at um t intensity of training so obviously regulating how much you're running you can't go from zero to 100 which is which which you see most often with new runners is mm -hmm. they'll try to go for it um mm -hmm. from the beginning and that's where they're they don't have the developed musculature to be able to train that long um or that often or that intense. Uh -huh. um, so that's when you're gonna start to see some of those like novice uh, running injuries. Mm -hmm. um, so just know know yourself and know um, have a training plan set. Don't overtrain. Again, that's when you're gonna see a lot of injuries. Um, and then a huge component of it, um, I think is just strength training um, and incorporating cross training in. Mm -hmm. If you don't do strength training and all you do is run and run, 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 um, you may be fine, but chances are, as a runner, you're gonna come across some overuse injury at some point. Mm -hmm. um, so when I think of strength training, I'm looking, I say reserve two days a week minimum to do some sort of strength training mm -hmm. um, or cross training. If you prefer cross training, I say definitely incorporate a form of strength training, whether it's resistance bands, weights, um, kind of those two body weight exercises. I don't really care, but you have to um, pay does, attention. Does Zumba you know, count? Does what? Zumba. Does that count? Zumba. Or step that would fall. <laughs> that would fall a little bit more in the cross train section. Okay. okay. Just, so, just curious. Um, Asking for a friend. I don't do Zumba. No, I, I love, I've never done Zumba, but <laughs> any form of movement, um, I appreciate. So if Zumba is what you enjoy, we'll throw that in the cross training se section. Cool. Um, but strength training, you definitely just need to give a little bit of love to your posterior chain. So glutes, hammies, calves, they're just all muscles that are utilized a lot in running and often not strong and often lack a lot of strength mm -hmm. um, with repetitive running. So yeah. um, that and then giving a little bit of love to the core. You can't disregard the core for performance from mm -hmm. a performance standpoint. Mm -hmm. Strong core, you're going to run faster. Kind for of sure. bottom line. I like that. So that's... That's one of like, thankfully it's changed over the past, let's say 10 years, but there's still runners who are like, I don't need to strength train. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm running, like I'm strengthening my legs every day. And I'm like, not really. Like you're, you're getting a little bit of mechanical load in your bones, which is making them stronger, but like, you're not really getting stronger you're just getting more condition which is exactly. still a benefit but it's different it's different than strength training endurance exercise is not strength training exactly i couldn't agree more with that statement um yeah there's 
something to be said for strength training and a lot of people worry that if they start doing strength training they're gonna get bulky slow down um and yeah that can depend a little bit on the type of strength training you're doing but mm -hmm. bottom line is if you're only doing it twice a week you're not gonna get bulky or slow for sure um so go out there program it in your schedule if you have to take a few days off of running and add strength training in that's the way to go yeah so um my podcast episode that I'm recording tomorrow is actually with an ultra runner who picked up powerlifting. No way. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. So we're going to talk all about that. Cut back big time on his training volume, but has been able to maintain like performance. Has it improved at all or just stay I think, consistent? Or uh, you'll find I don't know. Tomorrow. I don't know yet. We, <laughs> We'll figure that out, but he's, I think he's gained like 15 or 20 pounds in the last six months and his, uh, he's not slowing down, but he's been able to cut way back on volume, which is great. So that's so interesting. Yeah. So I'm a big fan of yeah. that. So, um, I'm excited to have that conversation. So little, little teaser for when that episode drops. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Like, I, I think that's, I think those keys are super important. Just, um, I'm just starting working with a uh, track team. We just started up, um, it's a homeschool group. Mm -hmm. And a lot of these kids did not come to my preseason conditioning. And it shows because here we are, track season starts, and they're going from no conditioning at all to sprinting all out and a lot of them are feeling it yeah that's yeah. kind of what you'd expect in that case exactly like you can't be like shocked like okay you were doing nothing and now you're doing a lot and it's not only a lot of volume it's a lot of speed yep and it's a lot of intensity and it's a ton of deceleration which people forget about like the Absolutely. faster you're going the more conditioned and, and the stronger you need to be to apply the brakes without, you yeah. know, goes, blowing something out. Yeah, same thing with going downhill, deceleration mm -hmm. too. Yeah. Get all that eccentric training in. For sure, for sure. Super important. Yeah, I've been doing uh, hill repeats every week. I, I saw that pop up on your Instagram. Yeah. Yeah, it looks fun. It's fun when it's over. <laughs> it's actually, it's not bad. I enjoy it, but I enjoy it because I'm really only doing the concentric part. I'm <laughs> walking down. You got full power. Yeah, I'm I'm racing up the hill, but I am not running down the hill. It's very slow, comfortable walk. So, That's but it, I still feel a little bit the next day, but I'm not doing all this eccentric exercise and then just completely trash the next day where I don't want to do anything. So, um, yeah, there's, you gotta, you gotta get that eccentric load though, for sure. Yeah, like, I think that goes with any sport, truthfully. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of value in eccentric work. For sure. So, now we're dealing with somebody who didn't take your advice on injury prevention and they increased their volume too quickly and they did too much speed work and now they're injured. So, what do they need to be focusing on now? Uh, so the first thing, um, just identify, again, intensity of training, you're probably gonna have to cut back. Um, telling a runner not to run is, doesn't it's work. Not gonna happen. Yeah, yeah. Um, good luck with that, unless yeah. there is something like a stress fracture, that's where I'd actually like put a hard stop on it, mm -hmm. um, which is really challenging for runners, but you just tell them to get in a pool, get on a bike, mm. do something as a form of cardio to kind of make up for no running. Yeah. But as long as it's not an injury such as a stress fracture that's going to become a serious problem if they keep running, mm -hmm. um, you start just modifying their running um, intensity. Um, so start there and then depending on the injury, kind of the most common running injuries you see, you see a lot of plantar fasciitis, um, Achilles tendonitis is a common one. You see mm -hmm. runner's knee, um, IT band syndrome um, mm -hmm. is another one. Those are kind of the top injuries. Um, unless you have you have a recent running injury, you want to throw on there? Not really. Um, I mean, I'd see like uh, piriformis pain quite a bit. 
Yeah. Um, but yeah, those are the big ones. Shin splints. Uh, yeah, shin splints. So, it's a medial new tibial one. stress syndrome. Yeah. But, Same uh, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, um, so I've got a, a little bit of an aside here. Um, yeah. Do you categorize all of that stuff? Those are all injuries, or or would you categorize things a little differently? So, like for example, um, if someone comes to me and they're in pain, right? So my scope of practice is I cannot uh, diagnose an injury. Mm -hmm. I'm not allowed to do that. So, but what I can do is I can diagnose movement pattern issues. So somebody's got knee pain, I can't say, hey, you have patellar tendonitis, or you have Osgood Schlatter's, or you, whatever. Yeah. You have a torn meniscus because uh, I can't see inside your knee anyway, right? But what I can do is I can do some passive assessments, and then I can watch them move, and I can say, mm, that knee is collapsing excessively when you're loading it. So let's change this and this and this, and let's turn off that pain signal because once we fix that movement pattern, the body's not going to send the pain signal, right? So yeah. with something like that, I'm not even sure I, I would count that as an injury. Like if there's legit damage, like a stress fracture, that's an injury. If you like sprain your ankle, like that's an injury. Yeah. But if somebody comes to me in pain and they're like, Hey, I'm injured. And I'm like, Probably not. Like, I don't necessarily say that to them, but yeah. I, I'm like thinking this in my head. Like, so anytime there's someone presents pain, their assumption is I'm injured. So do you see pain as an injury or do you see pain as, or like, does that all make sense? It does make sense. I get what you're saying. Um, so as a physical therapist, we're movement specialists or movement pattern specialists. Um, and just the way from I was trained in school, we're trained to identify an injury. So I label it as an injury, but that's just what I was trained to do. We're both looking at the same exact thing. Yeah. With any injury, there's going to be a movement pattern mm -hmm. disorder, most likely. Um, there's going to be compensations, muscle imbalances, mm -hmm. joint restrictions, muscle restrictions, all of this stuff. So yeah, same thing, just based on <laughs> yeah. basically what you said from the beginning, <laughs> just based on what we're legally allowed to do. Yeah. I label it as an injury because for my profession, it needs to be on my notes that there's like specific a specific code you have to write that says this is the injury gotcha um but yes you're looking anytime i assess a patient i'm looking basically head to toe to look at their entire movement pattern and figure out what's gone wrong wrong what's gone wrong where gotcha. um to best treat them but yeah i'm labeling it labeling it as an injury okay that's fine i understand i can appreciate that um so Let's talk a little bit more about uh, things, other things related to to coming back from an injury. Like, what do you tell the athlete to focus on and prioritize? Um, you know, if they're only spending an hour or two, maybe three hours with you per week, mm -hmm. so many more hours throughout the week. If If you're injured and you're just like dwelling on not being able to do what you want to do or not being able to compete let's say like how do you um how do you keep the athlete focused on progress like what do you tell them to focus on yeah so with running specifically um there are certain guidelines and measures you have um this is like if you're pulled completely out of running mm -hmm. that will be that will indicate whether or not they're strong enough to return to running mm -hmm. um but in your case kind of repetitive stress injuries where you're not pulling them out of the sport um fully and they're still doing it um you've already modified their running uh program to reduce it a little bit and to re reduce that training intensity so most of the time they're still going to be running they're not shut down completely um, but if you give them the goal of you create a exercise program of you need to do this strength training this day, this day, this day, and that day, um, whatever it is, um, 
they have that goal to focus on. So if you're still running, you say you do this this day, you can add a little bit more onto your running program the following day. Mm -hmm. um, so it's kind of just a consistent pace of um, keeping up with that running schedule. I feel like I'm being so off track here on this question. Nope, it's um, all good. But really you're not pulling them out of the sport. So uh -huh. kind of that depression that a lot of times comes along with injury. It's obviously going to be there, but they're still doing the activity, so there's still some hope. Where unfortunately, you go to most doctors, you walk into a doctor's office with a running injury, they're going to shut you down completely. No running. Um, Six which weeks. Is twelve weeks. Psychologically, physically, one of the hardest things. As an athlete myself, I know, and then mm -hmm. I've seen it multiple times with other athletes. Yeah. Um, it's just it's hard to take, mm -hmm. and the people don't respond well to it. Yeah, and I think a lot of times it's kind of overkill. It's not necessary. Absolutely. So, yeah. but I think that's that's a whole other topic of getting into, <laughs> you know, the differences between somebody who's, whose perspective is, all right, they're in pain. The fastest and easiest way to stop that pain is to not do anything. They were yeah. moving and it hurt. Hey, don't move. Yeah, a lot of times that, that doesn't solve the issue. No. You're just masking it, basically putting a band-aid on it in a difficult way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that creates other issues. Yes. Maybe mental injuries from not being able to do things that reduce stress in your life or... Exactly. Yeah. All those factors come in. For sure. So, uh, so let me try to reiterate what you're saying here so I understand to see if I understand. So, um, so as you cut back training volume, because that's necessary, Yeah. are you then trying to replace that with other goals, other like training goals? Like, hey, since you can't do this, let's keep you competitive and engage by focusing on these other things that will then improve your ability to run once you're cleared to do that? Yeah, um, exactly, spot on. Um, a lot of times it's, even what I do with patients, you're spending a good 20 minutes just talking to them and mm -hmm. kind of rebuilding that trust in, in them and that belief that they can run and will be able to run because mm -hmm. um, people are usually broken down at this point. Um, so giving them even alternatives for cross training too, just to keep up so they don't lose their whole, uh, lose their endurance, yeah. um, lose their cardio mm -hmm. standpoint, all of that, um, giving them other options and you're just kind of the brains that's fueling what they're going to do. Mm -hmm. Um, so yes. Spot awesome. On. Perfect. I think that's a really good way to do it because I mean, it's, it's so unhelpful when you're in that position where it's just like, all right, well, we're going to slowly take care of this injury. Yeah. And you're like, okay. And what else can I do? Yeah. And there's like, when I injured my back in college, it was kind of like, all right, we're going to do these back exercises and okay, good job. And I'm like, well, I need yeah. stuff to do. Like what? Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, all right. Well, uh, let's uh, do some bridges. I'm yeah. like, okay, what else can I do? Like, yeah. sometimes that's so frustrating. Like, there's no, like, hey, let's do this many today. Let's see if you can improve on that, you know, next week. Yeah. Or in three days. Or it was, it was all just kind of like, well, like, you know, let's just get you feeling better here. And then you can go right back to what you were doing before. And it's like, yeah, there's no on ramp. There's no, there's no guidance. That's just someone, yeah. that's what you need is just someone to guide you. Mm -hmm. And you see that a lot. Even when I first started as a PT, anyone who's been to PT knows what a bridge is, I'm guessing, um, mm -hmm. because everybody does them. Um, but there's such an importance to return to true function, whether it's getting up and squatting on the toilet or whether it's going to squat 300 pounds, whatever mm -hmm. it is, you have to train what you're gonna do, Yeah, uh, train for what you're gonna do. So um, modifying that activity specifically to what you're gonna do, what you wanna be doing is super important and I think kind of helps with that psychological aspect of, hey, these are the same movement patterns I wanna be doing, whether it's running, lifting, whatever sport you choose. Mm -hmm. um, if you can incorporate that in, some, that in someone's exercise routine, it's gonna change your whole mindset of it, so. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, being able to like 
chart that out. Like, okay, this this is what true return to play or to true return to training looks like. You know what that looks like. That's running, you know, 30 miles a week for you. That's competing at, you know, one or two 5Ks every month at yeah. this race pace. Like, you know what that looks like. Right now, we're here. And so we have to progressively get back to that. It's not just gonna be, okay, the injury is addressed and now you're right back to that. There's, there's gotta be some- Ramp up period. Yes. Yeah, for absolutely. Sure. Awesome. So let's say, uh, let's say somebody wants to contact you to, to train with you to yeah. do a little rehab, let's say. They've got some issues. Yeah. How do they do that? Super easy. Um, so you can contact me, Instagram, I have Facebook, on my own website, all my contact information is on there, um, as well as my email. So um, Instagram, I post a lot of great content if you just wanna see what I do. Um, and my Instagram, I just changed my Instagram handle, but it is, so my company's GG Physical Therapy. So it's GG underscore physical therapy. Um, that's my Instagram handle. Well, you get, you can jump right onto my website as well from there. Um, or reach me by email, which is just Gabriella at GG physicaltherapy.com. So those are the two best ways to contact me. Slide into my DMs, email me, um, I respond pretty quick. So I'd definitely be happy to help anyone that needs anything. Awesome. So let's say somebody's looking at at your Instagram and they notice that you're doing a really cool free hip mobility <laughs> workshop. Can you tell yeah. us a little bit more about that? Absolutely. Funny you say, because that is what I'm doing on Tuesday, January 26th, I think is the date, next Tuesday. So um, I think this one's going to come out sometime in February because I got quite a few in the bank. All right. However, so it is backtracked. Um, so it it will be recorded i'm hosting a live free workshop for anybody and everybody that signs up so it will be recorded and saved and will be up and on my well not on my website you can contact me for it i'll have a little pop-up on my website and on instagram where you just fill out the form and then i'll send you the link directly to the video awesome. but it will be about a 30 minute workshop just addressing hip mobility, which is super important and a lot of people kind of just forget about, mm -hmm. um, but helps with low back pain, obviously hip mobility, um, anything really from the back down. So entire lower extremity um, chain, um, great benefit to it. So you'll learn a little bit about hip mobility, anatomy of the hip, and then some great exercises as well. So. If interested, just hop on my Instagram. There'll be a link to get the video and just fill it out and you'll have all of that for you. Awesome. Let's talk a little bit about hip mobility for runners yeah. right now. So um, why in a sport where you're stuck in the sagittal plane and you're only going into hip flexion and hip extension, but like not even full range of motion, hip flexion and extension, why would you need to be able to move your hips? Um, well, I think you kind of just answered your own question there. So, <laughs> um, because you are only moving your hips forwards and backwards into flexion and extension, you're never gonna move it to the side, um, to either side or into rotation. So um, that mobility might be lacking, more restricted, um, and it, it is, if you do have full mobility there, it's probably gonna improve performance um, and just overall, overall ability to run well mm -hmm. uh, and will most likely reduce the risk of injury too. That's not the top thing for reduction of injury, but it's definitely gonna contribute to just general health and performance. Yeah, the way that I kind of explain a lot of this sort of thing to, to my clients or just the people that I'm talking to about mobility and strength and conditioning and all that is um like are you an athlete if so if you consider yourself an athlete then don't you want to be athletic yeah like the more athletic you are in general the less injury issues you're probably going to have so absolutely if you're stuck in the sagittal plane all the time then your body is 
going to become less athletic because you're not moving in the frontal plane. You're not moving in the transverse plane. Your body is, uh, is not prepared to deal with stressors that, um, that will come up Mm -hmm. e even though you're running forwards and you know, if you're on the track every once in a while turning left. Yeah. Um, even running on, you clip the side, uh, the sidewalk, hit exactly. a rock, anything your yep. body has Pot to adapt. Hole. Yeah. Your body has to adapt to those changes. Yeah. You run on like a bank street. Yep. Um, there's different pressures going through each leg the entire time. So with that one quick trick, just run in the middle of the street. Mm -hmm. You can. I always um, run down the middle of the, same. Of the road. I've, even just if there's, kidding. there's cars coming to dodge them, <laughs> you're going to feel better after I promise. <laughs> Um, this is not an endorsement to run in the middle of the road. <laughs> no, no, absolutely not. But it will help um, prevent any injury too. Yeah. So just make sure no, no, no one's driving. It's a clear road. Yeah. Yeah. I hear you. Yeah, just get on top of that crown. Exactly. Yeah. Or run in the middle of the ditch. That works too. Way up here, top of the crown, way down here. Yeah. Not as long as it's middle. flat. Yeah, I totally agree. Yep. Growing up in like the country in Ohio, not like country country, but pretty country. Um, I did a lot of running in the ditch. Yeah. Yeah. I always went on the crown personally. That is just my experience, but. Well, there wasn't a whole lot of space for me on like the side of the road. It's yeah. like small roads. But so if a car came by, ooh, <laughs> it's cutting it. Cut it too close, so I ended up. Well, I'll just run down here in the ditch. So, things it's a responsible choice. Yeah, I mean, during the winter, that ditch was full of like two feet of snow. So then it was like extra resistive running. I was gonna say that makes it tough. It's yeah. great training. Though. It was good. It was really good. Yeah. So, but. it's like running in the sand. Exactly. Exactly. So, I noticed. Uh, past couple days you posted about a little write-up you got yeah. in some publication can you tell us a little bit about that um yeah so um a community newspaper um had reached out to me they saw that I had launched my own business um and they reached out to me just wanting to do a write-up on me um and that was an awesome opportunity to get a little bit of public publicity so mm -hmm. um it's kind of a no-brainer on my end but um there's really not that much to it other than they just kind of wrote about my background of where I started from when I was a little kid to where I am now um, and nice. how my family is super proud of me. So, um, well, that's good. <laughs> it's a great exposure to kind of get my name out in the community um, and for people to see what I do. Awesome. Sweet. Well, thank you so much for stopping in to do this. Um, thank you for having me. For sure. It's been great. I've really enjoyed uh, just conversing today, but also uh, when we had met up earlier and were able to chit chat about kind of what we do and, and all that. And I'm excited for, uh, for what the future holds for both of us in a competitive space. <laughs> Me as well. I think I see a lot of collab happening in the future. I think so. I think that would be great. Yeah. Um, Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. For sure. Uh, one more time, can you let everybody know like Instagram yeah. and website? Yeah. So Instagram is gg underscore physical therapy. Um, that's you'll find me easily on Instagram there. Um, and then website is just www.gg physicaltherapy.com or just Google search gg physical therapy Dallas, Texas, and it should pop right, right up. And all my contact information is on there, so don't hesitate to reach out. And she'll come to you. That's right. I come directly to you. You don't need to have anything. I bring everything you need, um, and I'd be happy to work with you. That's awesome. Yeah. All right, y'all. Thanks for watching and listening. And as always, stay tuned for next week's episode. Adios.